All right, hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So this video is actually gonna be a re-upload of, of a video I posted sometime last year. Uh, basically, I got a lot of comments saying that, um, you know, there was, there was a lot of squeaking and uh, the basically the smoke detector alarm needed its battery changed. Apparently that was problematic for some people. So I decided to just remake this video and just talk about the same things I was talking about in that last one. So this video is gonna be about the end game or I see it as I see it in the free-to-play version of RuneScape. Uh, some people say that, well, look, uh, Enroy, you know, this is a free game, right? It's mostly just a glorified trial version. You know, get to level 50 or so and all the skills, run out of content, you just get bored, uh, and you just either quit or move on to, to the paid version of RuneScape. And well, I don't really agree with that. And so here are some eight, here are eight things that, that you can do uh, in RuneScape post I guess completing all the quests and getting up to level 50 that you can uh, do in the game. So, the first one is, of course, you do have some bosses. You have the Giant Mole, you have the King Black Dragon, you have the Chaos Elemental, so that's three bosses. Uh, they could add another two or three depending on what you consider a boss. So, for example, free to play, I have access to Agaroth, I have access to um, Goblin Flash Mobs, and also have access to Hard Mode uh, Giant Mole. So, here's some interesting activities you can do in RuneScape once you're at a relatively high level, at least in the free game, and each of these bosses, they have their own drop logs, right? So you can just say, well, the giant mole has a couple of drop logs, like for example, they have the cleaning mole, they have numbing roots, uh, they have the mole pet, of course, and basically, though the collection logs don't kind of discriminate between, you know, the members' logs, or the members' drops and the free-to-play drops, uh, basically, you can complete the free-to-play section of the uh, drop logs, even though, if, even though you can't tell the difference, but it's just, it, it's not really supposed to be for self-comparison, right? Because you're not going to say, okay, I got, you know, uh, this uh, drop exclusively in free-to-play. I was never a member, although, I mean, I guess you could create an account or something, or you just never were members, so then that would be fine. But, yeah, so free-to-play does have bosses, and they do have some drop logs. So the second uh, thing you can do in RuneScape free to play is uh, there are some mini games and D and Ds. Uh, there are a couple mini games. I think there are four or five. It used to be Dual Arena a while ago, but they removed, but I guess moved it. There's Birthorb Games Room. There's Graveyard Project. There's Clan Wars. There's Fist of Gothics, and then there's Cabbage Face Punch Project. So that's five, five mini games. Uh, some of these, we have only Fist of Gothics and uh, Cabbage Face Punch Project have. Um, have high scores. Uh, each of these three mini games, uh, Great Art Project, uh, Cabbage Face Punch, and um, Fist of Gothics, they have their own sets of rewards. Now, each of them is sort of unique or useful in, it, in its own right. Uh, for example, the uh, Great Art Project rewards are largely cosmetic, except for, I guess, some of the tele teleport tablets and possibly also. Um, getting pieces of the uh, RuneCrafter outfit. Um, Couch Face Punch Bonanza, you can actually, if you're, a, if you're an ex-member, and you're playing ex-Couch Face Punch Bonanza, and you decide to spend bonus points on something like farming or a slayer, then basically, you would get the number of bonus XP as if you were still playing in the members version. So that's really helpful if you just want to kind of efficiently use your membership. And finally, Fist of Gothics has, uh, Fist of Gothics, uh, Mystic Gothics has the battle robes and some other things, but fortunately it's quite dead, even on a spotlight and free to play. And then there, of course, D&D &D, so is really, I mean, besides Agaroth and, uh, and a couple of flash mobs, there are only two other, three other D&Ds, right? So one is a monthly D&D, &D. it's from the rewards, it's from the rewards of Beneath Cursed Tides. Basically, it's just fishing and farming D&D, &D, although only members can get the farming XP. Uh, there are evil trees in, runes, in free to play RuneScape, as well as shooting stars. So those are the D and Ds. In addition, we have some special kind of runes, uh, special skilling activities. For example, we have the Rune Span, we have the Artisan's Workshop, and we have Dungeoneering. Uh, Rune Span is just basically the meta for training RuneCrafting. You sort of go to this alternate plane of existence, and you siphon nodes and creatures and stuff like that. Basically, you can get you can get reward points in RuneScape that can um. You can actually be used in members, which is pretty cool if you're ever planning to get on members and you just want to get some of the grind out of the way first. Then you, like for example, I think you can buy the um, 
Best Runecrafter robes from Runespan for about 16,000 points uh, in total. So that's one option. You go for points, and there are sometimes some good rewards there, although the rewards aren't can't be used in free-to-play. It can also be good for just going for points and personal achievement. Uh, the second would be Artisan's Workshop. Now, you can do... You can unlock most of the stuff uh, from the Artisan's Workshop in uh, free-to-play. For example, you can, act, you can unlock all three cosmetic uh, armor sets. That's Necronium. I mean, it's not Necronium, but I forget what they are, but they're definitely there. There's the achievement. There's the follow your artisan or work on your artisan. And progress towards work on your artisan uh, can be done in free-to-play. And finally, we have Dungeoneering. Now, Dungeoneering, again, not a whole lot of uses in free-to-play. If you're already 120 in uh, pay-to-play even, then you don't really have much use for tokens, but there are people who do go for tokens, and it's like, you know, if you ever run out of stuff, I guess you could just use the tokens to repair and get back uh, some lost items. The fourth thing you can do is you can do money-making methods and flipping. Uh, basically, flipping is kind of what it sounds like. You buy low, sell high. I'm not really going to get into it because of uh, it's sort of self-explanatory. There are many, other better, many better guides to this than mine, but yeah, you can uh, do some uh, you can do some uh, money making. You can just try to challenge yourself to see how much money you can make in the free to play version of RuneScape. And some people just like that. They like to play games and make money. Uh, but yeah, as of this recording, though, it's a Monday. So I think it's either this Monday or maybe the next in the next couple of weeks, the Jagex will release the updated cap to the um, number of coins you can have. And while it's not really known how much that cap is, uh, well, it's not known how much that cap is. It certainly is probably coming to RuneScape soon. So we'll see that. So uh, the fifth is, of course, you can do Solomon's General Store. Uh, you can use your money to buy bonds, which can gift you uh, rune coins. Now, each bond is worth 195 rune coins, which kind of if you understand how companies sort of price their cash shop items, then it kind of makes a little bit of sense because there's a lot of items with 200. So I want you to spend a little bit more on... Uh, on uh, I want to spend a little bit more on their cash shop, basically. So that's why they sort of do it with uh, uh, do it with the pricing of the packages. So of course there are cosmetics, like for example, there's stuff from you know, uh, Great Ore Project. They have the wizard robes. They have the talismans, talisman staves, runecrafter robes are technically cosmetic because you can get them back to the ankle. But yeah, those are. Some things that's, I guess, sort of related to money-making flipping, but it's technically something different. So number six, we have PvP. Now, since the wilderness was basically removed, uh, PvP in the wilderness is basically entirely optional, uh, and there's really no point in doing it in free-to-play, because they don't have access to the Abyss, um, or the Charming Moss, where, uh, I guess, the Demonic Skull might be useful. But there's still some PvP going on. Uh, it's in White Portal, Clan Wars, World 3. There are usually people that are PK, uh, just PvPing for fun. Uh, uh, but yeah, there's also no level restrictions, but again, if you don't have a level, you don't have a lot of high levels, it's sort of not very fun. It's for you, so. Uh, there were some we have, you know, social events. Uh, these are events that are like organized by clans or various community members. Like, for example, there's the uh, Pink Skirt uh, Monday meetings. They're happening at around 1915 game time. Uh, West Bank, Salador, World 3. Uh, those are some meetings that happen every now and then, but again, sometimes clans do get some activities uh, going on. And finally, we have virtual levels. Now, virtual levels are exactly what they sound like. They're virtual levels. Uh, they're, uh, let's see. They're basically levels past 99 that don't actually show up when other people look at you, but you can have it, you can set a to you can set a toggle uh, for how the levels display for you based on the level of experience and they sort of scale up the levels just to say like okay what if this skill went up to say 120 and uh, basically I think that it's basically how they calculate it uh, but yeah some some free to play players uh, do find a lot of meaning in going from 120s because it it's a way way more time uh, than it is in members obviously because there's you know more time that's saved while being in members uh, but yeah so there are people, there are people free to play, even free to play peers, who do this and are kind of going for virtual levels and, uh, yeah.
So basically that's about it. That's my eight sort of free-to-play endgame features. And like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.